Hey, hey, hey! So, this might be my first real investment in audio gear. You might think, well, that's weird. But I never bought expensive stuff. The amplifier I use right now is like a really cheap one, like 50 euros second hand. And the one before was a quite nice amplifier, but still only 150 I bought it. And now it's like 250 or 300. This is my first expensive one, for me at least. You know, it's relative, but I won't tell you the price because it's not that really important. It was not like insane, but still it's much more than I used to. And as you can see, it's, um, uh, well, uh, a very well-known Dutch brand. Hypex. There you go. Hypex amplifier. And now the, the thing is, this is not an amplifier you can buy, I believe. I mean, the internals you can. Uh, but I think, uh, and I, I'm not completely sure, I think this is one they use at Hypex, I believe. Because I cannot find anything about it and it doesn't have like a uh, number or something. It's just an amplifier. So, for the people that don't know Hypex, uh, it's a Dutch company um, formed by, what was it? I forgot his name. <laughs> it's not really important who, who founded it, but uh, it's, a, it's a person that worked for Philips, I believe, uh, where they uh, designed the UCD, or at least did some research on it. And then he decided to, uh, you know, go at it on its own and created Hypex. Um, what fun thing is that the amplifier I have in my living room and I want to take it apart because it makes weird noises etc. Um, so it's not completely working properly. But that one uses the USD 180 I believe. But then the first one under produced under Philips. I mean Hypex later on had a UCD 180 I believe as well. And I'm not sure if that's ugh, like the exact same uh, design or not. I have no clue. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. It looks quite different. But we'll see if we uh, ever dismantle, dismantle the other amplifier, the, the cheap one. I bought it because these are secondhand, like what I said, 50 euros. And you get a UCD. Uh, six channel amp, which is quite funny, but the power supply is uh, incredibly underrated, so it's not ideal. I think you can even, maybe, I'm not sure, but maybe you can even like get those modules out and do something else with it. Not, sh not too sure about that, but might need to look into that if it's just for fun and giggles. I mean, this should replace it, of course. I bought this because I wanted a decent test amplifier, finally. Because the other one is making weird noises and I cannot trust it really when I'm measuring uh, loudspeakers. Sometimes it in introduces weird sounds that show up in the measurement and it's not my creation that makes that weird noises, but it's the amplifier. And that's not very much helping when you're measuring anything. So the, this is a six channel amplifier uh, it uses the Encore 400s and it has six of them. Uh, they don't all have their own power supply. I believe two channels have a dedicated power supply and I believe the other four channels share two power supplies. So in theory, the one with a dedicated power supply should be able to like output 400 watts in 4 ohm. Not too sure for how long and uh, what uh, THD. Uh, and the other one's like half, like 200, which is way too, well, way more than I ever use, but who knows. There is a very nice uh, review of the NC, the Encore 400s on Audio Science Review, which is, by the way, a very nice forum where Amir makes uh, measurements, very detailed measurements, far beyond my skill level of knowledge and uh, interpretation. But uh, he 
measured the Encore 400 and uh, it was measuring really well, especially in the THD and uh, so distortion and the noise. So signal to noise level of these, at least the one he measured, this should be the same, was signal to noise was lower <laughs> than my uh, DSP is capable of. So <laughs> no longer is the amplifier the, you know, uh, bottleneck, but now it's actually the, the DSP. And of course you can like buy a new DSP and then you have to buy a better amp, blah, 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 endless. But for me, I am sure that it's not the amplifier doing weird stuff, which is a really nice idea. So I'll show you, well, the front side only has a power uh, bottom. Button. And the back side has uh, six XLR inputs balanced, a power con for power, and uh, six binding posts. And, uh, well, I think quite decent ones. I like this detail. You can, like, move this thing around. Um, and, you know, to where your cable is um, going. So that's nice. That is sometimes a problem with uh, these binding post posts where it's like fixed and then cables uh, come out of these connectors at weird angles uh, in places where you don't want them. Then there's this thing, I'm not sure why it's there, but apparently you have to put this one in or it will not turn on. Don't ask me why. I ask them. And I guess they will reply why that is, but as for now, I don't know yet. But it would be fun to take a look inside and see how it looks. Don't you think? It's, a, by the way, a nice chassis as well. So it's a brushed black aluminium top and a brushed very thick aluminium front. Uh, here. So the only thing, I need a pre-amplifier and... Uh, Hopefully, something with a silver front and would be even nicer if it has the same chassis. So maybe I can look for a brand of chassis as well. I mean, they didn't create this themselves, I think. So it is probably a standard chassis. I'm just guessing here, but let's uh, take a look inside. So this is second hand, I'm not sure how old it is. It doesn't really matter for me, to be honest. Um, but it looks really nice, uh, still. No scratches or weird stuff, so I'll try keeping it this way. I actually don't have a power con connector, so I cannot even test it. As well as all my cabling is not for uh, XLR. Also, I use still my mini DSPs that are not balanced. So, <laughs> I might need a new preamp and I might need a new DSP. So maybe, but I think that's rather expensive. I'll buy a 410 from mini DSP. It has a volume knob, something I want. And it has eight or ten balanced outputs. That's again 600 euros or something. Quite a lot of money for a DSP and I have a DSP. So, well, yep, there we go. Ooh. That looks nice. Ain't that looking nice? Well, yeah. It is uh, exactly what I thought it would be. So there are six uh, Encore 400s. Uh, I think this is the soft start. Yes. So no huge plop. And this enables you to power the amplifier with just the push button instead of um, the connector on or the 
switch on the back. So you got a switch here and then you can use the front switch to enable it or power it on. Then there's a soft start that will start all these uh, SNPS. SNPS 600, so yes. Um, this one is powering these two. This one is powering this one. Same goes for this one powering this one and the outer one is powering the front two or in the back actually. So that would be channels for instance for the midrange and uh, tweeter for instance and these since they got all the power are for like low end. Uh, and I would like to know which binding posts those are to be honest. I guess it's the one that are marked, but I'm not sure. So this... Here. Yes, and here. Yes. So these were marked. These are the ones that uh, have 400 ones. And then these has 200 and these has 200. I won't be needing that ever, I think, but it's a nice chassis, by the way, very simple. I mean, I hope I can find something similar. Uh, they grounded it correctly as well. Shaved away the, um, what is it? Oxide thingy stuff. Cannot find the word. There's not much to say about this. It's just, you know, it's nice. Nicely done. Braided. Very nice. No tie wraps and such. Some shrink wrap thingies. Nice soldering. So I guess this uh, plug here is, uh, I guess, the enable or something. Like. If they're powered on, they're not doing anything until you use this plug, I think. Not sure why that is, but this whole thing might be uh, a contraption that is used with something else that had a cable going over here to say, okay, you can turn on. And in this case, it's just a loop that makes that connection. So it works all the time without being, uh, without having this to be connected to anything else. So that's what I think it is. Like, enable. Very cool. There isn't much to see here, but really cool. Uh, I don't have any cables for it yet. So I have to make cables so I'll order all the separate parts. I'm not gonna make the power connector, I think. I don't feel like doing that. I buy maybe a complete one, do all the XLRs because I have to go to unbalanced. And then the speaker cables I got are a bit crappy. I should replace that as well. But we'll see. Anyhow, that's the amplifier and I'm looking forward to using it. And um, maybe if I got all the cabling, I can do a uh, small test between this one and the other one. See if it's even visible in a normal distortion measurement of a loudspeaker. That would be uh, funny. If that's true, then the other one has quite a lot of distortion. Because normally it's hard to see. But at least now uh, I should be able to make measurements and I know it's not the amplifier going uh, wild. It should be stable to 2 ohms. So most of my contraptions are above 2 ohms. And I think even if it's a tiny bit lower and it's only a tweeter, I don't think this uh, beast has any problems with it. Well, not too sure. I think this was sitting the other way around. No, I don't know. I'll just look at the video. See ya!